hi everyone uh, welcome back hope you have enjoyed your holidays um, all right and uh, you know we we all seen about uh, you know set hash map and all that uh, today we will try to use uh, some of them in our uh, you know code all right as i mentioned earlier when i covered about the data providers i have clearly told one thing right so what are the approach that we have done so far is okay um, where we are reading from the excel sheet and we are we are feeding to the data provider this all looks fine but the only problem is if the number of columns gets growing the the number of parameters to your test methods gets increased so if there are 20 test data needed for your test you have to pass 20 values to your test method this doesn't looks really good and whenever there is a method if you are passing more than two or three values i think we need to stop it and then either club it to a pojo or a hash map so we will do that now okay so what is the problem statement uh, problem statement is we have a excel sheet that uh, where we want to feed lot of values let's say username password first name last name and more than that and uh, the data provider is having uh, you know the test method is having lot of parameters this is because there are lot of columns so this is a problem we are trying to optimize this with the help of hash map okay good now we all know that the hash map contains a key and value pair right so in our case whatever the data we have here okay we going to put it in a form of put it into a hash map okay so for the first hash map first we are going to create a hash map with key as this and value as this okay guys closely notice key as this and value as this the second hash map will have key as this and value as this okay the third hash map will have key as this and value as this okay we're going to store like that okay so it's going to be really simple so what we are going to do um, after storing this in a hash map so this will be our first hash map so the first hash map uh, basically is this okay and then the second hash map is basically this one okay this is the third hash map we going to store all these values like this okay and in any ways whatever the values you store at the end of the day the data provider needs to return a object array two dimensional object array right so now we have how many times we want to run the test we want to run the test for three times right so the the the, the rows will be anyways three so it will be an object array of two dimensional with three in the rows right but here we going to put everything inside a map okay we have put everything inside a map so the the column will be just one so we will be only feeding the hash map alone to the test method okay so what are the hash map you fetch you going to put so there is there is an object array let's uh, create a paint okay very simple guys okay let's create a paint so we going to have an object array with three rows okay 1 2 1 3 1, in the and then this is of a 3 by 1 matrix right this is 3 by 1 matrix okay so in the first thing i'm going to put first map second hash map will be put into this place third hash map will be put in set this so map 1 means this is the map 1 this is map 2 this is map 3 so we're going to write a code in such a way we going to put these values map 1 map 2 map 3 inside an object array okay so that it will be feed to our test method okay so this is what we are going to do very simple changes okay now first uh, the last row number remains constant but the last cell number is what we are changing right so anyway it is going to have only one column because everything will be a hash map so we can basically change this to one okay and we we want to store um, uh, everything in a map right so we want to have key as this value as this correct so what we are going to do 
we're going to create a map map string comma string let's name this as a map equal to new hash okay what this map going to do uh, it is going to store a key as string type and values also string so basically key is also string value is also string key is string value is string okay so we are telling map of string string comma string but if you notice for every okay for for everything for every row you have to create a new map okay as i told this will be your map 1 so this is your map 1 okay this is your map 2 this is your map 3 so for every for loop you have to create a new map okay so that's why you know as i already told so you can write int a equal to 5 in one line or uh, since we already have in a so int b equal to 5 in one line or we can also split that into two lines okay we can split that like this right the same way i'm going to do so instead of directly declaring and instantiating okay i'm just going to declare this here okay and i'm going to cut it okay and inside every for loop okay i'm going to create a new hash map okay map equal to new hash map okay now for every for loop it will create a map okay now we want to load the values whatever we want to load inside this particular map okay so instead of assigning to object array directly what we are going to do we are going to construct the key first so the key equal to so map needs a key and value right so the key will be always username password first name last name okay so username password first name last name this is your key always okay the first for ha first hash map second hash map third hash map everything so we're going to put we're going to copy this the key with this okay i value is going to be always zero okay so first i want to get the row number of 0 and then the cell number of first time the cell number will be 0 so 0 comma 0 it will fetch username okay this is the key now we want the value okay string value equal to everything re remains the same we're going to copy this instead of 0 we're going to put i okay and we're going to remove this whole thing okay we don't need that at all okay now we have a key we have a map a value so we can put it into a map how we can put it into a map map dot put the first entry is key comma value so let me explain guys the first we are starting from i equal to 0 uh, basically uh, i equal to 1 okay and now uh, it will go inside i value is 1 and j value is 0 will go inside so first we are getting the key value that is uh, zero we have hard coded the row value so this is going to remain the constant so row number of zero j of first time the j will be zero so username will be fetched second time the sheet value will be uh, the, you know the value will be row of i which means i is 1 j of 0 which means it will fetch this so this particular entry key value will be fetched and then it will be stored into the map now we have put it into the map but what are the map you generate okay so this is for the first time right now the j value becomes 1 okay first loop ends j value becomes 1 so it will go and fetch the password and admin okay then it fetch the first name sd first name. so last name this one so once this j loop is ended now the map is ready now we have loaded all the values into a map like this so now we have a map with these set of values okay once this is ready we want to what i told you once the map is ready we want to put it on the object array right so now we have to put it on the object array so let's go there once the for loop ended i have an object array of a okay like this right equal to map okay whatever i have i will put it in the map now we need to tell which index okay so i is basically uh, now one okay i is 1 but i need to put it in the zeroth index so i minus 1 so this value will be always zero okay because we have only one dimension right so this is the size of the array this is the index of the array okay so the index will be uh, 
uh, basically this will be the index will be uh, this is 0 comma 0 okay this is 1 comma 0 this is 2 comma 0 right so this is the object array index right so index of this particular object array this is a single uh, you can think it like a single uh, dimensional object array as well but basically it is a two dimension with three by one matrix okay it's a three by one matrix okay good now we have put it now after i ended it will create a new hash map it will again put the keys again put the values again create a map with all these values okay this value is now loaded once this is loaded this particular map will be put it into the i value will be now 2 2 minus 1 is 1 a of 1 comma 0 which will be put into this okay good the same way it will put the other map also now we are returning the object array okay very very simple guys again this is not really mandatory to know if you know until the previous uh, thing that's fine but this is very easy right we are not doing anything complex now since our uh, map is having only see our data provider column is only one okay so the number of parameters to your test method will be one what will be your parameter to the test method map of string comma string okay let's name it as data or whatever now if you want to fetch the username from a map what you can do data dot get username it's like normal thing okay how we will fetch a data data from a hash map you need to tell data dot get and then pass the key since the key is always username the key is always username right username password first name last name so we don't have to really worry about the keys username okay and then if you want to get the password data dot get password okay so even though if you have 100 values so even though if in the uh, basically the excel you have 100 values here that really doesn't matter okay because every hundred all the hundred values we are going to store into a hash map and we are going to take that hash map and put it into the object array like this okay so now everything looks fine let's try to check whether this is working right good good uh, everything looks fine let's try to run it So you notice it's still running in parallel all the values are now fetched as a hash map okay just a minute so all, all the tests got passed now instead of just uh, passing all these values and uh, number of values here we're just passing only one value any doubts in this so far Is any doubts? So if you if you don't understand this, it's completely fine. Okay, you can stick to the old method of passing the more variables. Maybe at the later point of time you will need it. At the time you can use it. Okay. So now to give a, give a quick summary, we have a problem with using data provider because the number of columns in your data provider will be equal to the number of parameters to your test method so as a good practice we cannot keep passing a lot of parameters to a method it becomes more clumsy and not readable so what we thought we will put it into a hash map like this uh, we put all these things a like key and value pass like this and we're going to create a map once the map is created we're going to put it into the object array because as a n n we need to supply it to the data provider right so because test ng works with data provider for data provider you need to put it into an object array so now we have done like this and it is working absolutely fine okay now we have solved the problem that we have before so you don't have to pass more parameters only one parameter to your best method it can handle any of these things okay good so any doubts again uh, otherwise we will move on to the next topic okay if not uh, we will move okay let's say uh, let's close this and now let me also delete this okay we will we have used to excel sheet right the same way we are we may also use um you know it's a the property file 
right in 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 programming world people use pro properties files a lot because um, you know for developers they can just go and change in the configuration if they want to do some changes without any deployment that's the reason they use the configuration files for so what is a configuration file so it looks like something like this go over to new and then you can go to create a new file and you can name it as a config dot properties or whatever but the 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 extension should be dot properties okay so this config dot properties file looks something like this so you have to give something in a uh, format of uh, let's say hash map so you have a key and value right so it's going to be separated with the equal to so this is a property file so let's say password you want to give some password equal to uh, abcd123 something like this url equal to some whatever or we can tell like uh, something like this okay maybe imagine uh, you want to give the automation suite to your manual testers for running the tests okay you are not responsible for running it they will run it your your only work is to develop test so in those cases they can easily come here and change the environment okay dev hyphen amazon dot in dev two hyphen amazon dot in so here they 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 find it more easy to change it here right instead you put somewhere in your code you put somewhere in your code here. okay they cannot change okay they find it really really difficult to change it here okay so a file like this or an excel sheet or an json file will be easy for manual testers to go and change the uh, you know some properties they want let's say we are not focusing on it now but for now we want to understand how we can read values from a property file okay there are multiple approaches that you can use for now i'll close all these tabs and uh, let me also go here and i have a package uh, called properties and i have also created a class i i did nothing here it's just an empty class with just main method okay uh so what we are going to do we are going to read the values from this property file and we're going to uh, print it okay so that we can understand how to work with property files okay first approach is using properties class okay properties class is a uh, class that is coming from your java using this we can also read the code uh, from the read the values from the property file so first for everything that you want to read you want to use file input stream okay file input stream uh, input stream equal to a new file input stream right and this accepts a file type okay maybe you can create a new file type so new file uh, type of let's say current working directory what is the file you want to read i want to read a file from my current working directory okay okay now what see again guys in excel sheet also we used this right we we gave the we want to create a new file that is this particular file is configured properties previously it was test data dot xlsx right the same way now we want to read this file and uh, using the file input stream right this is file input stream i'm passing the file okay you want to read this file okay you want to read this file that's fine uh, what type of uh, reading you want to do so there is a class called properties Okay, I want to create an object for this. Once you create an object for this, you can just tell properties dot load. Okay, and then you need to tell this. Okay, once you tell this, all the values in this property file, all the values in this config dot property files will be stored into this properties variable. Okay, now once it gets stored, you can basically properties dot get property and you can tell the key name okay what is the key here key is username if you tell key username okay it will basically print you uh amundan okay because the username value is amundan right it's almost like a hash map if you notice hash map is also we are using like uh, map dot get here get property right nothing else okay so what we are telling we are telling the path which we want to read file which we want to read it is present in the project folder root location so we are giving system dot get property user dot there and the config dot properties 
whatever you want to read we want to use file input stream because we going to read it from there okay if you want to write we have to use output stream but we want to read so we are using file input stream and the property class will help us to read it so this load method will load all the things from this file which is this which is this actual file and put it inside this properties variable so now we can get all the values okay for this particular statement will print us somewhere let's see okay so yeah now we can uh, easily get a value from the property file right so let's say password if you want to get password it's also simple so properties dot uh, get property okay so you can get it like this so uh, let's also get it like this so this is very easy it, it is working absolutely fine right but you know there are certain problems with this approach okay maybe if you see at least 99% of the people they will use this code to read okay to read a property file you go to any framework you you see other automation testers they use this code okay but the problem with this approach is let's say i want to give some value uh, time out equal to 10 this 10 is a number we know this is a number but this will be only treated as a string in property file let's say we want to pass a list of values okay let's say tools okay selenium apm okay rest assure okay we have tools okay whatever we want to fetch they all will be fetched in, in the form of string type okay this will not be treated as a uh, you know a number this will not be treated as a list of strings okay let's say i want to also print so maybe i want to just store it in a variable so yeah if you want to split each of these okay again you have to write your own logic okay so you have to tell tools dot split so i want to split this based on the commas okay once you split this based on the commas you will get list of string okay string of string array and then you can print the string array right if you want to print it again for i split dot length and then you can press out split of i okay so now if you want to print each and every value okay you want to get each and every value you are writing some code here okay you are splitting it you are generating a for loop you are iterating it you are printing it okay same way if you want to fetch the timeout value as a number okay let's say this is timeout this is this is this will be treated as a string only okay if you want to convert this to a number see it will be basically treated as a string but i want this as a number how to convert a you know string to number so integer dot parse int and then you can put time out then this will change to integer okay this is how you can do it so you are writing some lines of code some efforts you are putting some efforts to convert this okay most people at least 99 percentage of people will use the way like this only they have no other option they will use like this but we are smart we will use some different library to resolve the issues okay guys uh, can you follow me right so i am telling you what is the problem with this approach the problem with this approach is it is easy there is no uh, no harm in using this but the thing is if you want to read a number okay or a, or a basically a true or false value like a boolean or maybe a list of string values you have to write lot of logic to basically read it and then most importantly you have to remember what is this lines of code correct but now uh, if there is any better way let's see okay so what i'm going to do i'm going to create a property reader with ona most people won't know this but yeah we will learn
so there is a, some library called as owner okay you can go to your intellij and then you can type uh, dependency and you can also mention owner okay so intellij is smart it can if you have internet connection it can basically understand what is your group id if you just tell the artifact id it will populate this group id and then the version as well right so yeah now we can type this in your pom.xml and then you can basically reload your viewer this library will help us to read values from a property files effortlessly so easily we can read it okay how we will see so we'll go here and in order to work with this library what it is telling you need to create one interface okay i want to create one interface you can give any name maybe i will give it as framework uh, config something like this you have to cre create an interface and then they are telling also you need to extend okay config this config should be coming from your org.au1bits.owner okay very carefully choose the import package if you choose the rock package it won't work okay once you do this you don't have to really worry about anything okay you just go here if you want to read username you can just mention string username and then you have to create it like a yeah, abstract method abstract method this is the return type this is the method name right so method name should be same as your this name that's it it will map this values to this okay so this basically this one right it will map it to this second one i want to map password so let's go and put string password and then i can also put url right string url that's of string type but the next time out is a is a integer i want it as a integer so i can just tell int time out so i am not reading it as a string i am just reading it as a integer itself right and this is a string array right previously we, we got it as a string array here also you can mention it's of string array okay it, it has to return as a string array and the name is tools that's it it will automatically do the mapping for you okay only one thing is you need to tell where this file is located okay this file is located in which directory that you need to tell so now you go here on top then at the rate sources if you tell like this and then you can pass the value right so now we can tell value equal to this file is basically located in this location and inside this we have let's say so i'm going to remove this slashes and then replace with this slash see this double slash will only work in windows if you are using mac or linux it won't work so we have to remove this backward slash double slashes and then put one backward slash okay now inside this we have config dot properties this is the file path okay now let's check whether this is working that's it guys so we have given the path we didn't write any code we just mapped each of these values in the property files okay if you have one thing called as username you just need to create username method and tell the return type it is this a string right so you can directly tell string if it is an integer you can directly tell integer that's it now let's go here and write to use this code okay there is something called as config factory okay class dot this has a method called create which you can use and then you need to tell the class name which you have mapped so the class name is framework config so i want to create a object for this class okay that's it guys framework config is interface na no? yes this is this is just a mapping guys okay don't worry about it we we are not uh, creating a object for this we are creating a reference variable for this uh, interface okay oh. so now uh, maybe i will rename this as config so that it will be easy for us now uh, if you want to fetch um, let's say uh, config dot 
username that's it now if i tell username this is a method so it will basically fetch me the values of it okay let's say i want to fetch all this uh, config dot if is if you notice the tools is basically returning me string array the timeout is basically returning me integer directly i'm not doing any conversions in the previous case we did lot of efforts to convert a list of string separated by commas we first split it based on the commas we iterated it we printed it but here we are not doing any of that it basically the mapping alone will take care of everything okay so now we can just tell tools that's it it will basically give you the string array okay good now let's try to run it and see what's happening so it is telling there is some error okay c uses to see selenium project config dot properties cannot resolve a loader Mm -hmm. Okay, looks fine. The testing, uh, the test name. What one? Uh, the why it is test I or then? Uh, no, no, no. That is my username. Uh, that is my username. Uh, if you notice, this is my username. So if we go to see, uh, users. This is my username, testy. Testing many okay. bytes. You know, it took only five letters, so it became testy. So yeah, that is not a problem. Uh, let's uh, remove the value from there, and then let's try now. Okay, uh, let's try to run it. Cannot resolve a loader. Mm, why you cannot resolve a loader? Okay. Again, so the problem is, um, you know, we missed it to tell this is a file. Okay, the file basically is located in this part. So only if you tell file, this will understand. Okay, I need to look for a file in this particular location. Okay, otherwise it will be treated as a string. Okay, so we need to tell this is a file type. Whatever we are going to follow, this is a file. Type. And one of the problem again I told us. Previously, uh, you know, this particular thing will be only in my machine. C users test G Selenium project will be in my machine. In your machine, it can be different. So to remove this, okay, here we have used something called as system dot get property user dot that. The same thing here, you can also do this. Okay, you can remove the stuff that is not common. Okay, and you can basically mention dollar. If you mention dollar, you can mention user dot dar. Now it will basically fetch user dot dar, which means it's almost similar to your uh, system dot get property user dot dar. Okay, so it will fetch you the current location. Okay, so it will basically give you the current location. Let's try to run it again. Let's check whether this is working. So this is working absolutely fine. Okay. Now we have solved all the issues, so we don't have to really dollar worry about. Means what here? Dollar means it's a variable. Yeah. It's a variable, okay? It's a Instead variable. Instead of writing system dot get property, we use the dollar. Huh? Yeah, here this this uh, owner library guy who developed this, okay? If you want to fetch any of the system property, just to mention dollar, okay? He has internally written code to understand and fetch the value of user dot dollar, okay? Okay. Config is uh, that is uh, already defined class. Huh? Yes, it is a defined by this guy. Uh, the in pom dot example we have added one file, right? This guy. Right. So this owner guy has done lot of efforts. He did this. He he used property files for very long time. He knows there are a lot of problems with these property files, uh, reading and writing. So he has created this library and gave it us for use. Okay, we are now using it for free. So he has written code in this config class. Okay, in this config class, he has mentioned. Okay, I have created an annotation where you need to use something like this so that I can understand and read it from that particular file. Okay. 
so now what are the values you want to perform you can easily perform so let's say uh, i want to get the integer uh, time out value right config dot time out okay time out is an integer right so if i try to whatever the time out that's coming i am just telling 50 so if it is 10 10 plus 50 is 60 right so if i try to run it again it will print you 60 previously you need to convert it into integer type so now i'm not doing any conversion like that so that's a pretty good advantage of using owner we are going to use owner library in our framework now i am only covering see guys whatever the topics i have covered i have cover, covered only uh, whatever needed to create a framework so we are going to use data provider in framework we are going to use data provider with excel sheet in our framework we are going to use data provider excel sheet and hash map so we, we, we discussed everything in parts, okay? We want to read property files. So we have also seen about that. We also learned about Selenium. So we are going to use that. We also learned a lot of Java topics like abstract classes, interfaces. We, we studied them in bits, okay? Now, once we get really good confidence with all these things, we're going to build a framework. We're going to collate things. That's it. We are going to, uh, you know, uh, collate all these things together. That's it. It, it will become a framework. We're going to put some simple rules and we're going to create a framework from the scratch. Okay. So uh, that's all for today. I think uh, we can connect tomorrow and then we will discuss more uh, about maybe we will try to cover something in the Docker uh, or maybe a multi browser or uh, something like that. And then we will uh, head on to framework development. Before heading on to framework development, I want to cover all the topics, other topics. Okay. Any doubts? You can ask me now. Uh, yeah, Amutan, uh, why we did this framework config dot class? What I mean, what it okay. did actually? So previously, uh, if we want to create an uh, object for a class, what we do? We do new properties, right? Yes. Uh, but the thing is, here, this config factory is a class. Okay, there is other ways. Okay, maybe an advanced way is is to use a static method, uh, you know, to create a classes, uh, the objects. So here, the create is a static method. If you notice, this create is a static method that accepts the what class you want to uh, pass. Okay, if you pass the class, it will iterate through it and then it will create a class for uh, reference for you. Okay, you don't have to understand this generics and all. It looks really really complicated now. But yeah, believe me, guys, no one understand all these things. Okay. Most of the people don't understand all these things. Okay. For now, just imagine, just imagine that you are going to create a reference variable. You are going to create a reference variable instead of directly using a uh, new and then the class name, like framework config dot class, whatever. Okay. We are we are creating it differently. That's just imagine like that. Okay. But yeah. Uh, maybe at the later point of time, you will be in a position to understand what these uh, things are doing. Okay, but for now, just just the one line of code, right? Just uh, just yeah, believe sure, me. Sure. Just remember okay. it. That's it. We are going to create yeah. a framework config reference variable so that we can call all those methods. So if you imagine this is an interface, right? So if you have an interface, if you have a method, abstract methods, how will you call it? You will use a reference variable to call it, right? To create yes. the reference variable, just write like the line of code. That's it. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, I'm, uh, I'm going to have doubt for the extent report, uh, but uh -huh. but let, let let someone ask if they have doubt for this topic, then I will. Okay. You you go ahead. You go ahead. We'll give them time. No worries. Okay. So, uh, I'm going to even I was that um, uh, in extent report basically first time that index.html file was created, but okay. then after that it was not getting created, and I even I was getting the null over there so i am not able to uh, understand why that uh, whatever the code i wrote like uh, it, it gave me null so it's, even that index.html file is not getting created so can i can i share my screen okay i'll 